Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I've got a viewer letter today that made me want to talk about a topic that really impacts all of us that own tractors. And I'm going to say, if you've bought a tractor in the last few years and it's still covered under warranty, probably the biggest danger to you having a major failure that is not covered under warranty is the topic I'm going to talk about today. And I've, I've witnessed this many times. And the reason it's not covered under warranty is your responsibility. But a lot of us don't take that responsibility very seriously or don't even know about it. And nobody wins in the end when, when, when the service manager has to tell you you're looking at a $1,200 bill or a $1,500 bill on your nearly new tractor and it's actually your fault and we're not going to cover it under warranty. Nobody wins in, in that situation. So let's try to avoid that. Let's get to our viewer letter first. And this comes from David. And David says, I recently purchased a 2021 Massey Ferguson tractor. The owner's manual says to use only ultra low sulfur diesel fuel in this tractor, or ULSD. I've been using off-road diesel in my older tractor, and I would like to continue to use off-road diesel. And we'll talk about what that is. And he's been doing some research, and it's hard, hard to tell because there's conflicting information on the internet about whether off-road diesel is ultra low sulfur. Well, I'm going to answer that first today, David, and then I'm going to use some of your comments later to help my viewers. But uh, to answer your question, based on EPA requirements that went into effect in 2014, virtually all diesel sold today is ultra low sulfur diesel. Let's talk a little bit about that. First off, what's the difference between on-road diesel and off-road diesel? There's almost none, almost without exception. There's diesel that you buy at the pump that goes in your uh, either your diesel-powered car or truck that you can also put in your tractor, and that's, called, that's clear diesel. It has no dye in it. And then there's what they call farm diesel or off-road diesel or dyed diesel that has a red dye in it that is only allowed to be used off-road, and it's cheaper. And the reason it's cheaper, it's taxed differently. So... Farmers and folks that use a lot of fuel, uh, industrial folks, people that run skid loaders, people that run their equipment off-road get a little break from taxes. Uh, and, and, and you do too if you want to put it in your tractor because it's an off-road vehicle. Now, can you run off-road diesel in your, in your pickup truck? Well, you, if you get caught and it doesn't take much of that dye for them to find it, you get fined and you owe taxes. And that's a whole different topic. But the bottom line is, as of 2014, all diesel, with very, very few exceptions, both on-road and off-road, is the ultra-low sulfur diesel, ULSD. So we cleared that up. Now let's talk about something that's really important to all of us. And that is, what happens in that fuel tank? And the failure I was talking about uh, before that could cost you a lot of money, even on an almost new tractor, is contamination in that fuel tank. And there's, there's lots of things that can happen that'll stop that tractor from running dead in its tracks related to fuel. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't need to watch this video. I always get good fuel from a reputable source and I keep it in the barn and I keep the thing sealed. I don't run it around without the cap on. It could still happen to you because what's going on in that fuel tank right now is interesting because there's stuff going on in there. There may not be life on Mars, but there may be life in your diesel tank. There are microbes that can survive in a diesel tank in a dark environment, and they're in there, and they create, and I don't understand how all this works and don't care to, but they create a biomass, and it largely gets called algae, and it's really not an algae, but it's a mass of gooey stuff that can exist in that tank if it sits for a long period of time and you don't keep it fresh. And so you wanna be real careful. And if you get that slime starts breaking up and getting into the fuel system and into the filters, it'll kill that tractor. And that's not covered under warranty. The folks that built the tractor have no way of keeping that slime out of there. So you might wanna to talk to your local service manager at your local tractor dealership and find out if they've seen this before. Maybe you live in an environment where those microbes don't survive as well but if you keep your tractor in the barn and it's dark and you don't have the tank very full and there's air in there and possibly a little bit of condensation, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can get those microbes making that biomass. And I've seen YouTube videos where they dump it out of the tank and it just looks like a big 
slick of slime and it will goo up your tractor. So that's the, the first point I want to make today is keep that slime out. Now if you're worried about that or you're in an area where they, that is, uh, tends to develop, there are additives you can put in the fuel tank to keep that slime from developing, to keep it broken up. And again, talk to your local service manager, see what they recommend and use that if, that, if that's a problem in your area. Next thing I want to talk about is water. Water is a big problem in fuel, a big problem. Now you say, I, I don't keep my tractor out in the rain with the cap off. Well, condensation is a big problem. A lot of times condensation happens in certain environments, certain areas, and, and when the fuel tank is, you know, not totally full, there's a big area in there that can secrete water from the air. And you get a little bit of water in there and it's, it's bad on the tractor. I was reading uh, online that if you get more than a half of 1% water in your fuel tank, it's going to cause major problem to your injectors, major wear. And so keeping that water out of there is very important. Now, a lot of tractors, most tractors, have a, a clear fuel bowl where you can see if there's water in there. Check that often to see if there, there's water because the water will sink to the bottom of that and the fuel will go on through. And your filter will catch a lot of that liquid, but if it gets too full, something's got to break. You're sending water to the injectors and that's really, really bad. And if that happens, that's not, the, that's not a manufacturer's defect. It's not the fault of your dealer. It's probably really not your fault. You didn't know, or you, you know, you're trying to get fresh fuel. It just happens. So if you're in an area with high humidity, again, talk to your service manager. You may want to put, there's additives that you can put in the fuel that will help atomize that water and let that burn on through and keep that fuel clean. But that's a, that is a huge issue. Uh, rust or corrosion in your fuel system is, is a killer and it's an expensive repair. Now, if you do put an additive in, the additive in your fuel tank, make sure it's Tier 4 compliant. Because I've read that there are some additives that, that the, what goes through with the water is, is too big for the tolerances. Now, let's talk today about tolerances in, in these Tier 4 engines. I've heard, and I think this is right, there are certain components to those Tier 4 engines and you, that uh, injector systems that you can pull out Hold in your hand for 30 seconds and your body temperature will warm that thing up enough that you can't put it back in. And so the tolerances are so tight on these components that any kind of water in there or any kind of corrosion and your tractor is not going to run. So let's keep the slime out and let's keep the water out with an additive. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about today is cold weather. And you guys in South Texas, I bet, had problems with this last March. You had a cold front go through, and it got colder than it had ever been there. And if it gets down around 10 to 15 degrees for an extended period of time, your diesel can gel up. It'll form like a, um, like a snow cone in there. It's not really what it looks like. but And it won't go through your filters. And it will plug up your engine. And if it's 15 degrees out there and you're gelled up, you got nothing to do. I mean, there's some products that will try to break it up, but the time to prevent it is before it happens. And there's lots of different products out there that will keep your diesel engine from gelling up in the winter. And, and in southwest Missouri where I live, we don't usually have a problem with it getting that cold for extended periods of time, but we can. And so I always, last tank of fuel I fill up before I, I put the tractor away. Uh, now I feed the hay with it in the winter, but I'll put it away and not use it as much. I'll fill the tank almost up and then dump some uh, stabilizer in it to keep that gelling from happening and then it burns on through in the rest of the year. Now I'm going to tell you one thing you may not know about fuel blends. The refineries have a different blend of fuel in the summer versus the winter. And in the winter, in, especially in the north, they will actually put some uh, anti-gel components in to protect the fuel while it's being transported and unloaded. And so it will have more protection and need less treatment than the, the fuel they produce in the summer. The diesel they produce in the summer has probably no additive because they don't need it. And that's important to you if you don't use your tractor that much, and a lot of us don't use too many tanks a year. If you fill it up in the summer and then go to put the anti-gel component in there, 
you might want to put a little extra because that summer blend doesn't have much as much protection to begin with so uh, even you guys in Texas might want to think before you put your tractor away this winter putting some anti-gel additive in there and uh, and keep that thing running throughout the winter now the last thing I want to talk today about and really David in his letter summed this up really well is lubricity lubricants sulfur was horrible for the environment it was great for lubrication so when we had sulfur in our diesel fuel it kept that injection system lubricated and the old tractors were designed to have that sulfur in there and run with that extra lubrication and it's gone now the newer tractors are designed for that fuel to be pristine clean and so even on a new tier four tractor, I, I think lubrication can be a little bit of an issue because you get just a little bit of water in there or you get just a little bit of foreign material in that fuel tank and, and it may affect your, your lubrication. And all these components to get the emission requirements where they're required to be are running on such tight tolerances that there is no forgiveness in the system. So we need to make sure the fuel is clean and we have lubricity. Now I'm gonna, I'm going to read the last part of David's letter, and the only thing I'll, I'll kind of disagree with him about a little bit is I think this even applies to these new tractors with the Tier 4 engines. And this is what he says. He said, you might want to let your viewers know that if they have older diesel engines made before the days of emission requirements, they need to add some type of additive to the ultra-low sulfur diesel to restore the lubricity, the lubrication, lost by removing the sulfur from the diesel fuel. Older diesel engines with fully mechanical pumps and injectors need that additional lubricity to prevent excessive wear. And I, again, David, I agree with that. I'll add to it, I think the newer engines need it too. So I'm not trying to sell you on any uh, additives. And a lot of folks look at additives as they look at snake oil, but look at what the additives do and you may want to get something on your newer tractor and your older tractors all tractors that you add once in a while to add just a little bit of lubricity to the system you may want a, a stabilizer in the winter to keep it from gelling and you may want an anti-sludge slime uh, component in there and you may want from time to time need to add something to break up the water and the condensation that's in there so all of those uh, and now very few additives do all of those things i don't think there's one on the market that does everything so you may want a combination but keep an eye on your fuel because it's it's a big danger to get something contaminated in your fuel to cost you a lot of money and we want to prevent that before it happens appreciate you watching my videos if you'd like to subscribe to my youtube channel i'd be honored click the mic face icon and check the bell so you're notified when i post future videos Here's a link to my website and a tractor fun store with unique items for the tractor owner that help support my channel. And here's another video you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.